Welcome to the podcast about investing in startups, where existing investors can learn how to get the best deal possible. And those that have never before invested in startups can learn the keys to success from the venture experts. Your host is Nick Moran, and this is The Full Ratchet. Welcome back to The Full Ratchet. On today's special segment of Investor Stories, the investors address trends, sectors, and markets that they think are positioned for outsized returns in the future. This is the segment called What's Next? On today's special segment, we have Sergio Guerreri of Tech Coast Angels. Sergio, are there any big sector changes and or thermals that you see on the horizon? And if so, can you talk about what you see coming and the impact it may have? Yeah, I would say large drug companies, multinational corporations, they're just too large. And they're getting very, very slow. They're very bureaucratic. It's almost impossible for them to do real innovation. So they rely on the smaller drug discovery companies to fill their pipelines because they need to develop a large number of drugs and take them through the funnel before actually one eventually works the way it's supposed to work. So the good news is that there are a lot of opportunities for the small drug discovery company to develop products and then eventually sell those assets, those products to the large company. So there are good M&A activities. And the downside is that these companies are getting more risk adverse. So that means that they are not necessarily interested in developing or co-developing a product. They really want to acquire a product at the later stages now. Most of the times is they want to see phase two data. They're willing to pay more. They're willing to pay a few hundred million dollars, but they don't want to take the early stage uh, risk of maybe technical failure or early stage safety issues. The good news is so that there are a lot of M&A activities, but also the IPO market has been strong. I anticipate that they will continue to grow, to be very active for the rest of the year and hopefully for next year, maybe even more. And there is a need for faster regulatory processing. So if they just have a lot of things on their plate and not necessarily real incentive to approve drugs, they can have only headaches and potential liabilities when drug goes into the market. And of course, there are some reported serious side effects or even deaths and so forth. So they are really careful. Maybe one of the areas that is going to be grow in much faster, much bigger is the orphan space because again, regulatory process is much faster, entry to market is faster, and market exclusivity is definitely a big benefit. So I see this as the high level trends in the space. On today's special segment, we have Peter Wilkins of Hyde Park Angels. Peter, are there any big sector changes or trends that you see on the horizon? If so, can you select a couple that may have significant impact or are positioned for outsized growth in the coming years? That's good. <laughs> I mean, I, I think that everybody feels like they can do this well and are bold in their predictions. However, I would say the things that are really intriguing to me is this idea of, and I think there's an evolution. There's all this big data, but it's really big data that now can be used to make intelligent business decisions, mm -hmm. I think is really critical. So it's not so much analyzing what has happened, but more importantly, predicting what is going to happen based on real-time information. If you look at like the digital tech arena or the ad tech arena, I mean, there is a zillion solutions of how to more effectively analyze a consumer. But with all of that data, we're still having all of these marketers that don't know how to use the data effectively. And the reality of it is, is because they got a dashboard of 1,000 things and they just need three things. And what ultimately is, I believe, is that the, the software is going to have to have more intelligence to be able to have them focus on the right things, hmm. which are variable. You can't just pick three things. And so I think as companies start to harness the data and providing intelligence that allows you to help you predict and narrow behavior to fewer choices of what's going to win, that's a big push. So, you know, like I was saying, like some of our members can narrow from 10 decisions down to three. 
The same thing if software can intelligently narrow the things you should focus on. We got 10 critical factors, but is going to be varying on what's the most important three day by day. I think there will be a big evolution in that. I also think that kind of comes into this internet of everything, which I know is unique. And I think what is unique in, in the Midwest is the ability to develop solutions that will immediately drive revenue or cut costs. And I think that we're applying stuff that is in the consumer market, which is more of a fashion trend, which will evolve, like I was saying before, will help people make better decisions, which I still don't think we're there yet. We're doing a lot of historical analysis. But when you start doing that for companies in the field across a worldwide footprint, the type of big dollars that you're talking then are enormous. And I think that the Midwest is totally geared up for excelling in that arena And we have the opportunity to really excel. So those are some of the areas that I think are hot. And I think, you know, people should keep an eye on. On today's special segment, we have Shio Manat of 500 Startups. Shio, what sectors or trends are you following that you're particularly bullish on? So one sector that I'm super bullish on over the coming Never, several years, is insurance. I think that um, insurance is really, really poised to be rewritten from the ground up. Um, insurers have been even more stodgy than banks, and for a number of reasons, which I can outline, that industry is is fundamentally changing. So if you look at on the property and casualty side, let's start with auto. Over the next decade, or next couple of decades, many cars are going to start to be autonomous. That means that the ways that these insurance companies have been underwriting is completely going to change. And I think that the traditional guys, this is an opportunity for fintech companies to sort of displace the traditional guys altogether into what what it means to be an auto insurer. And maybe maybe it turns out that there are no auto insurers and people don't even own cars that much. And the insurance is actually... Uber and all these other companies are the insurers because you don't own cars. You just use them on a ride-by-ride basis. Right. It's like a subscription. That's shifting. Exactly. Uh, In homeowners, I think, you know, my friend Sean Harper in Chicago is working on a startup that uh, is potentially integrating IoT devices. So at BCG, there was a study done around the causes for claims and insurance. And of course, it's it's flooding, fire, and theft. And all three of those, we actually have new IoT devices that can reduce those things. So um, flooding is the biggest one. And in flooding, we have water monitoring systems that can early detect a leak and prevent an all-out flood. In, in fire, we have smart smoke detectors. And we, of course, have smart security systems as well. So if you do, if you install a few devices, you can actually reduce claims by a significant amount, and that's sort of something that traditional insurance companies haven't done much with, but a new player could. And then in life insurance, just people aren't getting life insurance that much anymore, and and the reason for that is it's just so hard to do. You have to have a blood and urine test. You have to go to a doctor. I think that there are interesting ways that you can make this easier. You can start with accident insurance, which you don't require a doctor's visit for. And then, of course, at some point, there is a future also with IoT devices with, you know, people talk about the Fitbit giving you more data. But I think the real answer is life insurance companies are using a bunch of different things to guess how physically active you are and what type of person you are to insure both life and health insurance. And why do you have to guess based on how old I am, where I grew up, and where I went to school when you have so much more information in my pocket now? You can actually ensure based on who I am rather than who you think I am. So all these things are changing insurance fundamentally, and you will start to see these things over the next few years. Yeah, I think we've seen lots of in- innovation on the the credit side and the lending side, and I think that that has a lot of application with insurance as well. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. What about uh, blockchain? You mentioned that earlier. Um, Blockchain isn't just restricted to cryptocurrencies or exchange of assets. There's many other aspects 
that blockchain enables? You know, how do you think about blockchain and, and the future of blockchain? Yeah, I think um, I I am bullish on the future of blockchain. Um, I, I do think that in the last couple of years, particularly two years ago, people were overly bullish on Bitcoin as a consumer facing currency. I, I think crypto still has great potential, but in terms of what I'm looking for on the blockchain side, I'm looking at it more on the, the ledger side of things, and there are tremendous potential applications of it. And I'm primarily looking at it on the enablement side. How do you enable traditional financial institutions via blockchain? That will wrap up this installment of Investor Stories. Head over to thefullratchet.net to leave a comment, sign up for the newsletter, or find resources discussed on any of the episodes. Until next time, remember to over-prepare, choose carefully, and invest confidently. Thanks for listening.